I mean, I, I'm greatly appreciative of the democratic roots that have been built in the country. There was one blot on it. I don't know how you feel about that, 1975 to 77, the emergency. But that was two years. It's gone. Uh, I'm very curious how you look back and think of I that. Think, I think that's a, that, that was a mistake. Absolutely, uh, there was a mistake. And um, my grandmother yes. uh, said as much. It's, it's fascinating you're saying this because, I mean, I did think that that was dreadful. It should not have happened, the emergency. One thing very similar, what you said your grandmother said to you with the former president of India, Pranab Mukherjee. My last conversation with him, this was a few months before he passed away. I asked him that since you've been so close to Mrs. You were so close to Mrs. Gandhi calling of the election at the end of the two years of the emergency that Mrs. Gandhi called, was it hubris, arrogance of an authoritarian leader that I will win, I want to demonstrate that? Or was it that she was beginning to have self-doubt? I asked Pranam Mukherjee since you were so close and Pranam Mukherjee told me that actually I can tell you I have direct uh, conversational evidence. She began to feel that she might lose, but she wanted to put that to the test had a fair election and actually lost. So in some sense, having made that huge mistake, she rectified that and brought back the democratic institution. So it's sort of your brief word sort of goes. It was very different though. Yeah. And there's a fundamental difference between what happened in the emergency and it was wrong and what is happening now. The Congress party at no point attempted to capture India's institutional framework. And frankly, the Con Congress party doesn't even have that capability. Our design doesn't allow us that. Even if we want to do it, we can't do it. Uh, the RSS is doing something fundamentally different. Um, they're actually filling the institutions with their people. So look, even if we defeat the BJP in an election, we are not going to get rid of their people in the institutional structure. Our chief minister of Madhya Pradesh, um, just before he was overthrown, had a conversation with me. He says, listen, my senior bureaucrats won't listen. They are RSS people. I tell them to do something, they don't do it. So it's fundamentally different what's going on. I feel that India is among the world's top one or two countries in terms of freedom of speech, the space for public debate, open criticism. And, you know, coming from an American, I mean, Americans do take pride in America's open space to say that India is right at the top made me feel very good. And that was not just me. We all used to celebrate the space. Given this concern, um, I, I would like to start by bringing you in. Is this of concern to you? You are there on the ground, that voice is being muzzled public debate and in the end, muzzling debate has a fallout on the economy, on how the country is doing in general. We will come back to the economy. I'm an economist. I will push you a bit into that later on, but on democracy. I want your words. What's happening? Is there hope? How do you feel about the situation in India? I mean, of course, there's hope, but it's much deeper than muzzling debate. Muzzling debate is a symptom. It's one element of it. Um, modern democracies function because there is an institutional balance in a country. Institutions that are independent, that operate independently. That independence is being attacked in India. So there is one now one big mother institution called the RSS that is penetrating all Indian institutions. There's not a single one that is not under attack and it's systematically done. And, and you can, the judiciary, the press, the bureaucracy, election commission, every single institution is systematically being filled by people who have a particular ideology and belong to a certain institution. So that's uh, that I would I would 
I would not say eroding. I would say strangling. And and that is what is happening. Um, as a politician, um, I didn't really appreciate this, you know, five seven years ago. But as a politician, I actually can only do my job if I have institutional support. I I am I am. The, I get support from the judiciary. I get support from the election commission. I get support from a whole number of institutions that actually protect uh, the conversation, the debate. If I don't have that support, I literally can't do my job. And frankly, I didn't, I didn't realize how profound this is until I'm actually faced with it. I'll give you, I'll give you examples. I mean, uh, in in debates in parliament, my, the mic is shut off. I mean, that's the extent of it, right? So we are not allowed to speak in parliament. Uh, we don't have uh, recourse with the courts. We are sort of having the, the RSS BJP combine has this massive financial uh, advantage, you know, 10 is to one, 20 is to one advantage. Businesses are told, listen, you cannot support the opposition. So it's a full scale assault. Um, on the democratic space. Yeah, and I mean that, uh, as you're saying, uh, one uh, did not appreciate India's strength till it begins to, the strangling happens because five, seven years ago, I mean, I, I would really see that it's it's such a vi vibrancy in the country and gave I us... Mean, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll just say one thing, you know, I used to wonder, it always used to be something that I used to wonder, how does a, uh, a Mubarak win an election with 97% of the vote? This was something I was always curious about. Um, and I used to think, okay, they just pack the, the polling votes. Quite by coincidence, I ended up in a conference once of the, uh, in Egypt, they invited me. And in that conference, I was struck that in a political conference, there were judges sitting next to me. It was just shocking to me. I was like, why is this judge sitting in a political conference? And at that point, I never understood it. Right. But what, it ha what was happening there was there was only one institution. And all other institutions were just pretend institutions captured by that one institution. And that is what we are facing today in India. There is only one institution. I mean, today, members of parliament came from Manipur and they said, look, we have a governor there, um, you know, and she just doesn't do her job. She doesn't think she's a constitutional post. She thinks she's a hey, ideological political post. And, you know, there's nothing we can do. We just go there and then we come back. Pondicherry, the government went. Uh, the, the, the lady who was put in charge over there, completely subverting the democratic process openly, not allowing bills to pass, not allowing uh, stuff to move, simply because she belongs to the RSS. I so mean, that's the, that's the attack. Yeah, I mean, this if uh, um, this continues, I mean, it's it's the loss to India. I mean, India actually pride is not a good thing, but this was one dimension in which we felt proud about India. And, and it will be sad to see if this goes. Rahul, let me bring in one critical comment about the Congress party. People very often say that there isn't enough internal democracy in there. And I do understand that, that actually democracy is important at a national level. That is what we want. But since the question does arise about internal democracy, I want you to say what your thoughts are. Is that a fair criticism? Is it difficult? Go ahead. You're speaking to the person who has been pushing this stuff in the Congress party for a decade. I'm the person who pushed elections in the youth organizations, pushed elections uh, in the student organizations, got serious beating in the press for that. I was literally crucified for doing elections, right? I was attacked by, own, by my own party people. So I'm the first person that says, look, uh, Democratic elections within parties, absolutely critical. But I got a question for you. Uh, it's interesting to me that this question is not asked about any other party. Nobody asks the question, why is there no internal democracy in the BJP? 
No one asked the question why is there no internal democracy in the BSP. Nobody asked the question why is there no democracy in the Samajwadi Party. But they asked the question about the Congress. There's a reason. We are a ideological formation. We are an ideological party, and our ideology is the ideology of the Constitution. It is the ideology of equality. So yes, it is. I think it is more important for us to be democratic. Um, and okay, uh, if others are not, well, that's fine. But for us, as as the institution that fought for independence, that gave uh, India the constitution, I think it is critical that we are uh, democratic and have democratic processes. Hello, everyone. HW News English is two years old now. When we started this venture, we promised ourselves one thing: that news should remain free, because right to know is the right of every Indian. But to keep news free for everyone, we need support from some of you, and thus we have rolled out membership on our YouTube channel HW News English. But mind you, the membership is completely voluntary. The programs that we were doing earlier, that we are doing now, will continue to remain free. First level is a basic level. Here, you can be our supporter by paying rupees one ninety nine per month. This membership gives you certain perks and benefits. The perks include unique batches in front of your name, a live show from Mr. Sujit Nair and from Mr. Akhilesh Bhargava per month for our members. You can also vote in some exclusive members-only polls. Now the second level is super supporter. Here you can be our super supporter by paying rupees three triple nine per month. This membership will include every perk that comes with basic level. Additionally, our super supporters can be a part of a WhatsApp group where we can have discussions and suggestions on various topics. The second perk includes a gift pack with our merchandise. And the third perk is a Google Meet with Mr. Sujit Nair, where you can join the meet and ask your questions to Mr. Nair face to face. Lastly, if you like, we would give a shout out to our super supporters in our programs. So, hope to see you soon with our badges.